Hey designers, welcome to HDDC The Hub. I'm Heather and this is my new channel for the new and aspiring crochet designer to learn how to build income streams within your crochet business. Now, I hope that you are all tickety-boo and everything is going well in your part of the world. I have a new topic to dis discuss with you today and that is the lack or abundance mindset. So, what is lack? Lack is the mindset of scarcity. So it's where you believe that there's not enough to go around, that by somebody else having their plate full means that you will go hungry, that the more sales somebody else gets means the less that you will get. It's fear. It's fear that there's not enough to go around, that those that are already established, the big names, have it all and there's nothing left for you. And on the flip side of that, you've got abundance. Abundance mindset is the power of possibility. It's the mindset of there being more than enough, that it's pushed down, overflowing. It's seeing that the more sales another designer gets is an indicator that there are there's a high demand for patterns and that there's more than enough to go around. It's seeing possibilities all around you. Now, one of the most reoccurring questions that I've had in the very early days of the HTDC hub, um, I'm talking like the first week it was set up and also when I was asking questions to potential or new designers on the HDDC Instagram account, the main question would be, um, you know, I'm scared that I won't get sales, that there's not enough people out there to buy my patterns, that there's just no point because there's already so many patterns out there and that did make me really sad because living in that mindset is not a pleasant place to be and I intentionally choose to have the mindset of abundance and that to see how many possibilities are out there and the potential that is out there and so I have put together this example to highlight that to you because one of the best ways to switch from a lack to an abundance mindset is to look for evidence. Um, lots of people out there are crochet designers and they are reaching their measures of success. Now I'm going to just stop here and say I did an entire video on measures of success and you definitely need to go and watch that. But if you go and look at your favourite designers or the new designers out there, the ones that are letting you know that they are doing this as their full-time job or even as a side income that is paying them abundantly then that's all evidence to prove and suggest that it's possible they're doing it so you can do it so i put together this example now i googled how many users does ravelry have and wikipedia came through with the goods and said that in march 2020 there was nine million registered users now i then started doing some number crunching on that for all of you that, that need to see this that need to hear this so suppose one third of those nine million are crocheters okay so that's two million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred and seventy people that are potentially crocheters on Ravelry. Now suppose they purchase two patterns on average per month. So that's 5,999,940 patterns per month. <laughs> then suppose that the average pattern price is six pounds, great British pounds, 35 million, that equates to 35,999,640 pounds. 35 million almost 36 million now suppose that you have a goal your goal of success per month is to sell 100 patterns to make 600 pounds so that you can put food on the table at the end of the day so that's 600 pounds take 600 pounds from 35 million nine hundred ninety nine thousand six hundred and forty equals 35 million nine hundred ninety nine and forty pounds remaining which means 
that 59,998.4, point four, point four. <laughs> let's just round that up, 599,998 designers would reach their goal of making 600 pounds per month. Now, I can already hear some of you coming at me with the what ifs and how and about, and I'm ready for you. So, it also said on Wikipedia that there are a million active users per month. So, doing the maths again, suppose that one third are crocheters. There's 333,330 people. And if they purchase two patterns per month each, that is 666,660 patterns per month. Now suppose again that the average pattern price is £6, which then means that is the equivalent of £3,999,960 spent per month, almost £4 million. Now suppose that you have a goal of pattern sales at £600. So you take off £600, which leaves you with a figure of £3,999,360. Which means the 6,665 designers per month would reach their goal of making £600. That is huge. That's a huge, huge, huge amount of designers reaching their goal per month. Now, there's lots of factors to take in here and you're very much going to have the people right now saying to me, yeah, but what about? And then also you're going to have the people where their mind is opened up to the possibility because these factors can go either way. So in terms of those figures, the, some people are crocheters and knitters. I decided to go with a third as crocheters because less people do crochet. However, some people do knit and crochet, even though knit might be their first love, knitting might be their first love. But that can go both ways because you might also crochet and knit and want to put knitting patterns out there, which opens up a whole huge amount of audience. Um, or your pattern might be crochet, but also appeal to people that are also just knitters, which increases the percentage of the 9 million that could potentially purchase your pattern. Since March 2020, there are probably more users on Ravelry. Um, there could be less, there could be more because Ravelry has its accessibility issues that it's yet to resolve. However, there might also be more or less monthly active users on there. Now, if there's more, again, that increases the amount of people that could potentially purchase your patterns. Another factor, variation, is that some people may purchase more than two patterns per month. Alternatively, some people may buy less than one pattern per month. They might only buy them every six months. But there are most likely people out there, like myself, that purchase a pattern to cheer themselves up. And that happens more than once a month. So if people are purchasing more than two patterns per month, that increases the figures of how much is being spent per month on patterns. For example, on the first figures that I, give, that I gave you, if each person purchased four patterns, that doubles the number there, which I'll put on screen for you. Um, so you can see then that opens up so many more possibilities of how much money is then available. Um, the other factor that I've got here is that some people will purchase all of your patterns because they want to support you and they collect your patterns. So if you show up and you put out eight patterns a month, there are people out there that will purchase all eight patterns because they love your stuff so much, they want to support you and they want to make it. And then on top of that, they will still go and buy two other patterns from other designers because they like to try other designers work out or they want to make jumpers for their nieces, their nephews, whatever else they've got out there that they want to do. So just because people might buy two, they might, you might have such a loyal tribe that they specifically want your two or that yours don't even count and they'll get others on top of that. Like it's just a necessity that they have your patterns. Um, 
Another factor, another variation is there are more sites than just Ravelry out there. You've got Lovecraft, you've got Etsy, you've got Pinterest, which will lead you to all the designers' websites. Um, there are so many different places like Payhip that are available, Ribbler, where you can get patterns as well. And they all have monthly active users and registered users that are all looking to get patterns. And that, again, increases those numbers to a limitless amount because the possibilities are just absolutely staggeringly huge. Um, another, another variation is that magazines aren't just in digital format in terms of a single download. They could also be available in a magazine or books or publications like that, which is a whole other avenue that you can get your patterns out there. Um, there's also other platforms and social media such as YouTube as well that you can reach people through which again that extends the amount of people it goes from the 9 million registered users to what billions of registered users um, and there are so many knitting and crochet channels out there across various platforms that have huge followings and that will directly influence what people want to purchase um, another factor is that the population is ever increasing. So <laughs> day in, day out, you have more people being born and that means you've also got more people learning to crochet and more people in the future that are going to learn to crochet. And I truly believe that it's a compound effect that the more patterns that are out there, the more people will start to realize that crochet and knitting for yourself is like a rewarding and fun thing to do. And the more choice they have in patterns, the more likely people are to take it up because they can find something for their style, which means more patterns are being purchased. And it snowballs into this absolutely huge possibility, huge. Another factor is that sales are evergreen. So they continue to happen. Once you publish a pattern, it is on your website for life or when, until you choose to take it down. So you, month in month out will have visitors come and visit you and again with the compound factor you may put out a pattern and so you have one on your website which means when somebody comes to purchase they spend six pounds but in a year's time because you've consistently put out two patterns a month you now have 24 patterns available which then means that when somebody comes on and finds your pattern and they really really want a certain design that you've made they have a look and they see that you've got another four that they really want. And so they then went and bought five patterns, which means they just spent 30 pound and the six pound, which not only does that mean that you need less sales to hit your income goal, but it also means that if people do that more repeatedly, that you're exceeding your sale goals. And again, hitting on the compound factor is that the more patterns you have, the higher your income is each month, the more that that snowballs, the more that people get to see you, the more that is there that they purchase when they do find you. And it honestly just continues to grow. And the more patterns there, the more reviews you get, the more people post about your stuff. And it really does open up a whole world of possibilities. You might have somebody buy your pattern in a year's time that has a huge TikTok following and they make a TikTok on it and a million people see it and 10% of them come and buy your pattern. You just don't know, it could happen. Um, I follow a um, lots of different businesses, um, handmade and small businesses. And one of them is the XXL Scrunchie company and she's in Canada and she makes giant scrunches because scrunches are quite fashionable for your hair at the moment and and she had somebody make a TikTok about her scrunchie and it got 80,000 views and so she gifted scrunchies to her and that TikTok got a huge amount of views and from there her own TikTok started to go viral and then she started to sell out in her collections and that's a huge possibility for all of us as well. We could very simply sell a pattern and a celebrity make it, or the algorithm would just pick it up when a regular person purchases it. And then your audience is even bigger, which means even more people will see your pattern, which means even more sales, which means even more possibilities. Um, 
And then another factor is, again, and I, I totally hear you, some designers will have a smaller income goal and some will have a larger income goal. Now, again, I'm gonna say here that I champion having multiple income streams. I think that that's the best way to be secure within your own business. And so some people may also teach on the side, um, they may also have digital products such as the way that the hub does. And so some months they may put patterns out and see an increase in sales from that and other months they might rely on other streams of income. For some people they might have a smaller income goal of just a couple of hundred pounds a month because they want to just make yarn money and cover the tech editing of the patterns and other people might have even bigger larger ambitious ones but there is space for all of us because i truly believe that the universe is abundant is full of abundance and that there is more than enough for all of us out there even just going off the ravelry statistics that's 6,666 people making 600 pounds a month and that doesn't mean that just because there's already 6,000 people on there that you can't start because the more people that start, the more people might want to start crocheting and you go through those factors again. It's huge, it's absolutely huge. And I really hope that by watching this video, you realize that there is enough to go around, that you look for potential, you look for possibilities. When your mind says, what about and goes towards more the lack that you reframe that and say but what about and go more towards the abundance and look for proof if you are really one of those people and i can hear some of you already saying it's just a load of woo and what about this what about that i challenge you to go and look for evidence that suggests that these possibilities are out there start following the designers that show their income reports or talk about their milestones follow the people that are a lot more transparent about what they're doing it doesn't have to just be in crochet it can be in any business because if they can do it you can do it too and that will help change your mindset more than i ever will make sure that you are reframing what you're saying to yourself I've got a couple of resources that you could turn to if you'd like to do a bit more on your money mindset and abundance. Um, I read a book recently by Rob Moore on money and I'll put it on the screen for you to see. Um, it was set in the UK, which I found useful as I'm in the UK, so the examples felt very relevant. And it was about um, your money mindset, how to make more, how to give more. And I really enjoyed it and it really helped me keep my mind where it needs to be. Um, there's also other books out there like You're a Badass at Making Money. Um, and then on Instagram, I recommend that you follow It's Chloe Slade. She does a lots of reels and um, different prompts on money manifestation and money mindset. And then also Laura Ann Moore. She's a new financial account that I've started following. She's got a new YouTube channel. Um, she's all about getting your finances sorted and um, mindset so go and follow those and again the more people like that that you follow the more examples that you find the more possibilities and potential you'll see so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did drop an emoji below um i would like you to drop one of the cash emojis whether that's the money with the flying wings um the bag of money whatever that is drop that below so that i know that you watch this video the whole way through and i'll see you again in the next one take care bye